Okay, I'll start. I'm sure people will be popping in uh, as we go along, and that's good. And most people will be watching it on replay. Um, thank you for joining me on Valentine's Day uh, for uh, The Least Likely Entrepreneur or How I L Learned to Stop Worrying and Love E-Commerce. Um, normally, when I do um, presentations like this, I've got them all written. I'm reading off a teleprompter. I have slides. Today is really super casual. I'm just going to talk to you. Um, and in about... Uh, it should take half an hour to 40 minutes, and then we'll do Q&A. You can ask me anything at all that you want. Um, I, there's a lot of people here uh, who already know me. Actually, most people here already know me from uh, my other classes, so that's awesome. Um, uh, uh, okay, I'll tell you more. Okay, so for those who don't know me, which I think is just Joel, <laughs> my name is Daniela Sioni. Hi. Um, and I, uh, 11 months ago, oh, it said that my microphone has changed. One moment. Can everyone hear me? Okay, let me, let me start again. Sorry about that. I hit something, and, but you can hear me. Um, about 11 months ago is when lockdown began. Uh, a little lower now. Okay. Okay. I wonder, oh yeah, maybe I can turn up the volume. How's that? Yeah, okay, good, good. <laughs> so 11 months ago, uh, when lockdown began, I was in a really um, very precarious place because I, I'm a lifer, as a freelancer, I'm a lifer. I've, I work in the film business and I work as a writer. Uh, I'm a comedy writer and I worked on set as a script supervisor, something I don't think I'll, I'll be ever going back to since... Um, everything I've learned during the lockdown and what I've been able to achieve, thankfully, uh, but something I, that I loved for years. Uh, but, you know, those of you who are in the film business, which is a bunch of you, know that that is um, a 70 hour a week uh, job. And it's, it's uh, very all consuming. Um, it pays very, very well, of course. Uh, but you know, you never know when your next gig is and all of that. So when lockdown hit, I was at kind of a career high in that I had just gotten my US work visa, like literally the day, the day of lockdown. <laughs> of course, I haven't used it for a day yet, because I haven't been able to leave. But I got my US work visa as a script supervisor, which was something that lawyers told me I could never do because it's it wasn't a creative position. Um, this year, I am going to be going for my US work <sighs> visa as a writer. Um, 11 months later, I, I'm finding myself being shopped in LA for uh, representation, something I thought I could never achieve as a writer in my 50s. I'm in my 50s, uh, as a new writer in my 50s. Um, this pandemic has brought on uh, a lot of learning for all of us, but also for me. Thanks, Ada. <laughs> I'll, I try not to get distracted by the chat, but I always do. I always do. Um, and at, at the end, we'll, we'll talk more. But um, so, yeah, I was in a very um, precarious situation because I had um, all my gigs pulled out from under me on that day. Uh, couldn't use the work visa that I was about to go on to a gig to um, had a very high level of debt at that point I I was 70,000 in debt my rent is quite high I've got um, my backstory I've been recording classes so I've got a fake wall back there in case you're wondering what what that is <laughs> now there's like a full-time studio in my house as I record uh, my classes anyway um, and I was panicking I didn't know I was worried like I think I was the most worried I've ever been in my life and and up until this year I was a worrier in general <laughs> uh, so it was it was a bad few days as I looked at my life and thought what can I do I can't go to set because for those first few months there was we couldn't go to set we were in full lockdown now of course the world is in lockdown and people are still going to set to work unfortunately or fortunately depending on <laughs> your perspective but I couldn't go to set I had all these immediate bills I had to deal with, like my rent, um, which was three weeks away at that point. Uh, so I, I had uh, to do an assessment. Now, I did a talk in August uh, that a lot of you were at, so I won't repeat that talk. But if you want that talk, I just email me. I'll send you the link. The talk was called um, How I Earn 10K a Month Working for 12 Hours a, uh, 12 hours a Week. Um, and uh, that one goes into deep, deep detail about exactly all the steps I took. Uh, I don't want to repeat the talk today, but the talk is there where, where I show you the exact steps I figured out. Uh, but today I wanted to uh, 
go into the trajectory of the whole year and, and how that's been going and what's going to happen this year um, and how I've been able to help my students um, uh, do, you know, change their lives. Uh, because I never would have thought, um, I never knew at that point that I was going to become an entrepreneur by the end of the year. Um, I became an entrepreneur right away, but that I was going to become a, a a serial entrepreneur. Like I, I now am, I've just opened up my second business this week and I'm opening up my third next month. So <laughs> it's been a really, once you crack the code of being able to earn a living online with like a lot less effort than you did working um, a job on set, you start to realize, um, I mean, it's addictive because you don't, it's not a lot of you don't have, I, like, I didn't have any capital when I started. I didn't have, uh, and even for the two new businesses, uh, there's, they're also low overhead. So I still don't have any, I don't need any capital uh, to do those. Um, but as you, yeah, it's, it's, it becomes a bit of an addictive process. And also you get a lot of fulfillment out of it. So the reason that I am, um, I'm getting shopped next week in LA uh, as a new writer, uh, sorry, next month, it's March 12th, uh, is I won a major award. In fact, I won seven writing awards last year year um, for the first year in my life. The reason I was able to do that um, is I was able to write. I actually had time to write my scripts because I wasn't on set. Um, I had time to write and rewrite and enter contests <laughs> and I had money to enter contests. Um, and yes, I won seven of them, but this one comes with uh, an award of, of trying to get the writer's representation and trying to put them in front of production companies. So the dream I'd had since maybe I was 25, because now I'm 51. The dream I'd had for all those years, I never stopped to let myself pursue because I was on set uh, for 70 hours a week. Um, loved my career. Believe me, I loved being a script supervisor. I got to work uh, around the world with big directors. I had a lot of joy, but um, I, I was I was overworked. I was so overworked that I couldn't pursue my creativity, which... Um, I tried to do it half and half. I tried to do it on set half the year and uh, writing half the year. But you know what? I, this year I got to do it almost all the year and it made all the difference in uh, my productivity. So the, the reason I really wanted to do this talk today is especially for people like me who are creative and have creative dreams and um, whether you work on set or not, because uh, working on set is great. <laughs> A lot of people here do. Um, uh, I know that, uh, especially if you work on set, you probably also have creative dreams. And if I um, knew in my 20s what I know now, uh, my life would have taken a completely different trajectory. And so I just want to shout it to the hills. Most of my, um, I have a program called Coffee Break MBA, and most of my Coffee Break MBAers are actually my age. There's really not a lot of people in their 20s in that group. Um, we're all starting businesses in our 40s and 50s, really. Um, and that's cool, too, because, like, there's no, it's never too late. Oh, like, goodness. I'm finding uh, now in my 50s. I'm going to... Oh, did someone say something? <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Um, uh, I'm, I'm finding that now starting a new career, uh, I can see in my sights the things I've always wanted to do, like live in New York City. And um, I, I and anyway, I, I'm, I'm um, because I'm being casual and it's not written, I'm going in circles a little bit, but <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to uh, continue on, on what I learned. Okay, so um, the thing that the first thing that hit me, so the first thing I did just to speak in general terms, the specifics are in that other talk that I can send you, um, is I used to teach uh, live uh, in Toronto. So occasionally when I was off work, I would teach comedy writing. And, and script supervision and directing in live classrooms in Toronto. So uh, during my panic attack moment, I knew that I could, um, I could probably parlay that into an online course, but I had three weeks to do it, right? So I'd have to find the people uh, for my class um, and it wasn't cheap. <laughs> it wasn't a cheap class. Then I'd have to deliver the class in, in a venue because normally I'd book a theater. By the way, booking a theater can be many times a thousand dollars for a weekend in Toronto. Um, so this was actually a big break to me because I didn't have to spend the thousand dollars to book a theater. So the theater became what I quickly learned how to use was Zoom, <laughs> as we all learned how to use Zoom very, very quickly that week. Um, and so I designed uh, my, I, I just basically took the course that I already taught um, and 
figured out how to deliver it on Zoom over five weeks, like five, four hour classes. Normally, theaters are so expensive that I would have to deliver my courses in two eight hour days. So I think back to that and 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 go, wow, how did people, and some of you, Sandra, you were in my class where it was eight hours a day. How did you do it all weekend in a room full of people? But it was just the economics of um, renting theater space in Toronto. Um, and so now, anyway, so it became uh, a lot more. So for me, the first thing I did was this one online course. That's what I started with. And it was my TV comedy writing course, which was my flagship course in Toronto. My script supervision course, also a flagship course, now even more so. Um, but uh, you know, for uh, in terms of my writing classes, it was popular. However, um, I, you know, I had now uh, uh, a bunch of comics because most people who take that course are comedians who had uh, no money and no way to um, perform. So I, I couldn't go back to my comedians. I mean, I could, I did, but most of them couldn't afford to take my class at that time when lockdown hit. Um, and I had to uh, find a way to find students who could afford to take the class in other cities. And in other cities, people don't know who Daniela Sayoni is, right? Uh, people barely know in Toronto, right? <laughs> so um, I had to figure out a way to market online really quickly. Um, and I did. Um, I figured it out. So it took me about a month to crack the code. I call it cracking the code because it felt like I had uh, discovered the... <laughs> secret elixir to making money that I had not known before. Um, uh, it wasn't hard. It was actually one of the easiest things I've ever done. When you consider that my day job was being a script supervisor, which is quite a complex job and it's quite an involved job, this was nothing compared to... Um, now, we all have different genius zones. We all have different things that we're really good at. Not everyone uh, might even be a teacher. I, I, I firmly believe that there's something, at least one thing that every single one of us can teach uh, and have great impact um, in teaching that. But not everyone uh, will gravitate towards uh towards what I did, which was uh, creating an online course. And that's okay. I have uh, people in my coffee break group, my coffee breakers are doing all kinds of things. We'll talk about that later. But there's so many ways you can um, make a living online that I just never stopped to think about it because I never had to because I never had the time and I never had that. And what I learned, uh, the biggest lesson I learned was that uh, business is creative that marketing, all marketing really is, is finding your audience, engaging your audience, and then changing their lives. And that's exactly what happened. And I wouldn't sit here and tell you I've changed a bunch of people's lives if they, if they didn't tell me that was the case. Uh, my students are the ones, um, uh, because uh, let me tell you, I've been able to teach hundreds and hundreds of people um, this past year, and I've gotten a lot of uh, love in return. For them. Um, oh, sorry, I'm just going to mute all while I because someone's mic is on. Um, uh, so, so that first course uh, got me my first $10,000 and, um, uh, and, and it got results for people. Like people were, wrote scripts. I, I, by the way, in that course, I had people in three countries. Um, and over the, over the course of the year, um, I was able to sustain the 10K. I, I, over the course of the year, I had five courses. I created five courses but because I became so fast. Um, so I had my TV writing program, a feature film writing program, plus writer's rooms that went with that. Um, I had a punch-up class that I created. No one in the world was teaching punch-up, which is one of the other things I do as a comedy writer. So I created a course on that. Um, I, I transferred my script supervision course to an online program. That's my biggest uh, moneymaker uh, because internationally, uh, that course is now out to seven countries. I've got uh, students in seven countries um, and uh, soon to be three more. I've got students now in three other countries uh, asking for that training. Um, and I also train directors. I took my directing class and put it into an online format. So for me, once I started to see that I could earn 10K, so 10K was my average. Some months I made 20 and some months I made eight, but like it's, it was pretty, pretty steady. Um, once I saw that I could do that consistently, in, in August, I created um, a, a community called Coffee Break MBA because I realized that if other, if I could do this, as a woman in debt with no capital and high, high um, living expenses in my 50s, what could other artists like me with different skill sets do? <laughs> um, and I wanted to, um, that course does, so my, my, my courses are not 
um, they're not cheap and they're not expensive. Like, like my film classes range between three and 500 us. Okay. But I didn't want to charge that to my coffee break community because um, it's a bit of a social experiment for me. So um, my goal with that community from last August to September coming up is that the people in that, in that group earn a million dollars collectively online. That's my goal. Um, uh, that it's not a it's not a huge goal because uh, that means I have forty eight people in there. Forty of them um, did twenty five thousand dollars like total until September. That would be a million dollars. So um, it is a very doable goal. I'm going to take stock with them at the end of March to see where we're at. I know I've had a I have a few um, five figure earners. Anyway, I didn't want to charge them what I charge my film program because um, this coffee break MBA group is my are my guinea pigs. So we started in August and I, I, I started uh, putting in content every week. So basically that, um, that community, I call it community, it's a course and a community and it's coaching. Um, I started to talk to them. Um, I, I do live Q and A's with them every two weeks. So I do Q and A's every two weeks and we do zoom strategies every two weeks. So every single week there's coaching and catch up and brainstorming and strategizing in there. And then there's also lessons. So I started from the from I went through all the steps that I um, went through to learn how to market how to find my audience, how to engage my audience, and then how to change their lives. And I put them all into a curriculum. So we're like, 10 units in now. So um, I'll tell you guys later what what's in the program. But basically, so that was sort of my sixth course, but it's very like, low. it's not it's not a moneymaker for me. It's more like my social experiment to get the word out and see if um, we can spread the uh, ability in the community uh, of artists to see uh, what they can do with their expertise. And by the way, have a lot of comedy writers in my program. So there's people um, that I am, you know, literally that I'm competing with in the marketplace, but I don't believe in competition. Um, so I'm actually training other comedy writers how to teach writing classes. I'm actually training other script supervisors how to teach a script supervision class because there's no... Um, there's really no such thing as competition in the sense that we're all unique. And as teachers, as, <laughs> as teachers, as uh, creatives, we each bring something very different to the table. And in fact, a number of my script supervision students, I'm, I can't wait to like, let them meet the, the teacher that's going to be, um, I have a, I have a student is she here? She might be here today. I have a student who um, is creating a course for doing script supervision. And I can't wait to like share that with my 300 students in that program, because I think they will love it. Um, um, but anyways, so yeah, it, it's not... Um, if you approach, I, I used to do this with my comedy. I used to run a comedy room in Toronto called West End Girls. Um, and it was really to showcase female comics. Um, so we'd have eight women and one token boy. And I never believed in competition then either. I just believe that if we lift each other up, that the whole community rises. And that is exactly what happened with West End Girls. Um, I, there were a number of comedians who went much farther than I ever did as a comic. Uh, and, you know, bless them, like a few of them have Netflix specials. And it's, it's my joy to know that um, we built a thing and we created a community and we had an audience and we practiced our craft and we had fun doing it. And we even made money because West End Girls sold out every single week. It was the first time I learned about marketing on a very small scale was running a comedy show at Comedy Bar for eight years um, and having to fill a 100 seat theater. So a lot of what I learned about marketing, I just, it's just uh, because I had to, right? Uh, oh, hi, Lisa. I saw, I just saw that you're here. <laughs> um, uh, so yes, yeah, so no such thing as competition. I'm not, I don't, uh, I, I think if we all um, approach our businesses that way, you'll see. Uh, by the way, the other thing, the other thing that happened, um, which I did not anticipate, uh, was that our my coffee breakers, the 48 people building businesses in my community, in my program, um, we're all each other's customers. We're all each other's cheerleaders. Um, so I actually hired uh, one of the people in Coffee Break. I hired her. Now that I have to go to LA and, and present myself as a new writer, uh, I have a student in the States. Well, they're not my students, my community. <laughs> it's different than my classes, uh, this Coffee Break MBA. She's uh, in New York and she's an HR specialist. So she's revamping my resume to be a, a, to be a pro kind of a creative resume. And I hired her from the group. And 
and we're all hiring each other. It's really um, a kind of cool, actually, because we see the beauty in uh, each other and we see our talents. Um, so uh, what else did I want to tell you? So yeah, the, the thing about if, if, if you don't know where to begin, and it's something that you're interested in, and believe me, um, we should all be interested in this because not only is it the way the world's going, it's really, um, it's really satisfying. I'm at a point a year later where now I, I was delivering my courses live when pandemic started because, because I had to, like they were brand new. So uh, now uh, I've got them pre, I've got most of them, not all of them. I'm about to have all of them pre-recorded um, and I can still support them live. I can still go in every week and do my live weekly Q and A's, but the students can go at their own pace. They're pre-recorded. It takes hours and hours off my week, which is why I was able to start a second business. For me, my second business is, um, is going to be this first one, the one I'm doing this month is a drop shipping business in the in the US. So I'll be selling physical products in the US. And then next month, I'm doing a print on demand business where I can sell my jokes, I can have my jokes printed on mugs. Um, the, what I realized is I've in the past, I had, uh, like before pandemic, I had two best selling greeting cards based on my jokes. But I made pennies on them anyone here who's ever made who's ever made money as a comedian will will know that like you, the royalties on things like greeting cards super low right even though I, one was nominated for an award in the US and both of them were best selling cards and uh, I think I made $600 total on all of them and they sold something like 20,000 units or, or whatever so I realized I wonder how I could because I love writing jokes I wonder if I could just make more money on my own jokes. So the mug company that's coming that I'm doing next month, I, I, as I have more time on my hands, and as I'm researching business models for my own students, I start to see things that make sense for me. And that was something that I really gravitate to because the profit, um, the profit margin on a mug is $9 US. So imagine my same joke or different jokes, um, each joke on a mug, I make $9 US rather than three cents. So <laughs> So that's going to be my third business. Anyway, I'm rambling. Um, so uh, what I was trying to say by telling you what I'm expanding into this year. So last year, my uh, I had goals. So so whatever you do, the first thing you got to do is figure out what you love and who you love to serve. So that's the first sort of unit in my um, Coffee Break MBA. But whether you are interested in Coffee Break MBA or, or not, the first thing you got to think about is what do you love to do and who do you love to serve? Because if you can figure those things out, you'll be really, really happy no matter how you do it, whether you do it live, whether you do it online. Uh, but if you do it online, the ability to make money from it is exponential because there's billions of people in the world. Uh, not all of them are going to um, engage with your product, but you only need a certain amount. Like if you think about it, my $500 class, if I sell um, 20 units of that, that's $10,000. My $400 class, if I sell 25 units of that, that's $10,000, right? Um, it's not really a lot. So if you, out of the billions of people, if I can find 20 scripts supervisors who want to pay $500 for my program, which is actually way too cheap. I, I'm raising the price this year, but um, uh, because I, I realized once I was out in the marketplace, how much I was undercharging for that program, especially because it is a life changer. Um, but anyway, you, you look like if you really only need 20 people to make $10,000, or even if you have like a $200 course, and you need 50 people, it is much easier to it's it's much easier to do that online when you have many, many countries to choose from. Um, and uh, there is a process to it. And it's there is a little bit of money involved in terms of sometimes you have to pay for ads, depending on what the thing is that you're selling. But so first you figure out what you love to do and then you figure out who you love to serve. So in my case, I love to teach. I love really what I love to do is I love to take really complicated, complex, uh, complicated concepts and simplify them. Um, that's what I love. That's what all my courses are that I can take a very massive subject like script supervision and break it down into doable steps and allow someone to transform into a script supervisor in eight modules. And I have done that repeatedly successfully over 25 years in the classroom. So I, I knew I knew that was a proven system. And also with my comedy writers, I have a course that is in five modules that can take a new writer to their pilot script in five modules. And a lot of my writers are also winning awards this, you know, especially this year. So, um, so I, so that's what I love. That's my genius zone is, is, and that, and so I, with no business experience other than my live experience this last year, this year, last year um, of going through this, uh, I was, that's what 
part of what my coffee break MBA is about. I'm developing a business course by trying to develop all these businesses, uh, to, you know, try to develop all these artists into launching their businesses uh, this year and being self-sustaining and just proving to myself that I can teach you guys that and, and do that. Anyway, so that's my genius zone. So who do I love to serve is, uh, is uh, uh, artists, artists, definitely people like me artists. Um, I love to serve the LGBTQ and BIPOC community. Most of my students are in those communities. And that's who I love to serve the most. Um, it's just, um, I, I love when people get access to worlds that they normally, like when I started in film 30 years ago, um, even women, just any woman <laughs> had a hard time breaking into the business. Okay. Like, uh, uh, never mind if you're a woman of color, um, but any any woman had um, a, a hard time. Um, so I loved swinging open those doors for people and and getting them um, onto film sets. Uh, and then in the writing community, actually in the comedy community, I never taught comedy, but I ran a comedy room. And the biggest problem was access. Women didn't have access to stages in Toronto in 2008 the way they do now because of now shows like mine and many others who said, you know what, we're just going to give women more stage time until there's enough stage time for women. And that's what happened in Toronto, but things don't change until you change them. So anyway, that's what I love to do. Um, and so that was easy. That was a no brainer for me. For some of my students, it takes a little bit longer to think about what's the area that I want to focus on. So you find your niche, you figure out who you love to serve, and then you just start <laughs> start. Um, and, and I mean, by start, you can start training or you can start doing and um, in my in my I'll just read you like some of the modules that we go that I have in the class that are already up. So my goal is to have 20 modules up in Coffee Break MBA. I've got 10 up so far. So I just keep adding to it every week. Um, so it starts with finding your niche and then finding your audience. I do money mindset. So money mindset is actually huge, especially for women, especially for women who grew up like me, who, who didn't grow up to believe that money was something we deserved a lot of. <laughs> so uh, for me, the money and for my students, the money mindset aspect of uh, a coffee break MBA is actually huge. Every single week I do a different uh, talk on money mindset, just retraining our brains. Uh, because I have to say, um, especially when women talk about uh, what we earn and everything, I actually have members uh, in Coffee Break MBA who are female entrepreneurs who got huge backlash, I mean, before Coffee Break MBA, but also during uh, for discussing how much money they make um, on their Facebook profiles. I call these people the, who criticize uh, women or anyone for making money or, or for just doing things in general, the tomato throwers, like in vaudeville, when they throw tomatoes at the comics, they didn't like, uh, I think if you put yourself out there, uh, male, female, anything, you put yourself out there and you do something different, you're going to get tomato throwers, you can be pretty much guaranteed about that. Um, I've learned that I learned that doing a comedy room. <laughs> and I learned that uh, doing uh, online business. Um, uh, so the the community I have becomes a safe space for us to talk very openly about the money we're making, and how we can make more of it, uh, and what we're doing uh, that can, you know, I actually take a lot of risks. I, 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 um, I now that I because now I have money to take the risks, I take more risks and try things out and take more courses, and then relay to my students like what is working to my community, what is working and not working. Um, so, uh, yes. So, uh, oh yes. Uh, so money mindset, huge. Um, but, and because you do have to do a certain amount of that, if you come from, um, an upbringing with a lot of baggage, which I do, I'm a, my daughter of Italian immigrants, money doesn't grow on trees. you got to work really, really hard for your money. My God, I haven't worked so little for so much <laughs> until the pandemic hit. I would never have known this um, uh, had lockdown not happened. Um, the next one is engaging your audience, um, finding your brand, uh, online course creation. Of course, that's my specialty. Of course, I'm going to teach that. Uh, copywriting, creating a sales page. Some of this, you won't know what it is yet. Lead mag, creating lead magnets and sales webinars. And we're up to email marketing in the program. Um, so I used to charge by the month. So I used to charge $16 a month um, 
for the program. Um, and it's still, it's still that except that it's a yearly now, now that we have like all the, a, a huge chunk of content up. Um, uh, my coffee breakers pay me one ninety seven a year, uh, us. Oh, sorry. All my courses are in us because what happened during the pandemic is most of my, most of my customers are in the us. So I, I just had to put all my courses in us dollars. So, um, in that course, so they go, you, you can, you can either learn uh, through a program. Now, by the way, there are a lot of, a lot, a lot of uh, marketing and business courses online. And I mean a lot and uh, the vast, and I, I've taken some, uh, the majority of them are in the $2,000 US range for the things that I am uh, teaching my artists. And I know that because I've taken some of the, these courses. I took Mar Marie Forleo's B school, which is really a money mindset course for three thousand dollars Canadian, and it's a it's it's a good money mindset course. But that's really for me what I got out of it. And um, I took Amy Porterfield's program, which is two thousand US. Um, a lot of the same things that I teach because I learned by doing them, and she learned by doing them too. And hers is really, by the way, advanced, like meaning like you could go really deep with hers. And she uses software that I don't use. She uses Kajabi. Um, there's a lot of systems that a lot of the gurus will teach you that cost a lot of money that you don't need to use to make this kind of money. Um, the thing that I love about um, about what I do is I, I, I've always been really, um, I, I spend a lot of money, but I've also always been really cheap in the sense that I try to find the cheapest hack. So even my script supervision kit on set, some script supervisors spend so much money on their gear and everything. And I've always been like, here's my laptop, here's my pen and paper, let's go, right? <laughs> I don't have huge software. So, so in my, we do, there is a software that I love that I recommend that I'm actually an affiliate for that I I give people a rebate on if they from their coffee break a tuition if they use it called Sam card. Sam card became my secret weapon. I go into a lot of detail on it in the the talk I did in August. So if you're interested in in learning it gets really into the nitty gritty of of the marketing techniques I used and how I use Sam card. But Sam card, so here's my overhead. So when I was renting theaters, I was it was like a thousand a weekend, right, to teach my classes. This is kind of a joke. My Sam card uh, membership because I have a higher plan. I don't have the lowest plan that my my that I started with and that my students use the lowest plan is like 39 us a month so I pay a thousand a year for my my bells and whistles plan so instead of paying a thousand a weekend to teach my course in a theater I've got Sam cart for a year for that price um, I'll have Facebook ads so depending on the month I spend anywhere between 400 and a thousand on Facebook ads so I never go above like 10 percent of what I'm going to earn which by the way is peanuts. <laughs> if you think about people's advertising budgets, and it's peanuts because it's part of finding your audience, right? Um, some months I don't do any ads at all. It really depends. Um, it really depends because some courses I don't even need ads for because I have my audience already. Um, uh, I can find my audience through things like Facebook groups. There's all, all kinds of ways you can organically find an audience without taking out ads. Um, and so thousand so yeah facebook ads is my overhead any software that you use um so zoom so my zoom membership is twenty dollars a month can you see how like much how you can start a business for so much less money in 2021 than you could even five years ago like i I'm, i was trying to think of my expenses of run, running a comedy room when i ran west end girls it cost me 120 to book the theater 100 bucks in advertising costs uh, 200 bucks to make a thousand dollars right because like ten dollars a ticket 100 seats so um yeah it's actually cost less than running a comedy room on a percentage basis the millionaire messenger is a great book to know uh what you're interested in oh kiteri i did a review of uh i do reviews of books so thank you i'm going to read it and do um and do a talk about it but um that's great i i did one on think and grow rich which i which i really enjoyed uh, to do. Uh, I, I really enjoyed my talk on that. It's on my YouTube page, actually, even though it was for my coffee breakers. Um, so I, I, I love money mindset books. I have a whole bunch in the in the program that I've reviewed and that I that I talk about too. Um, so yes, thank you for the recommend. Um, so low overhead, finding my audience, the, the most brilliant part was meeting meeting many of you like many of you who are here today. i am only met because I was teaching these courses. So Ada in the UK and Tommy in California, uh, Sandra met me before. Um, yeah, there's there are many of the the jewels that I've met this year um, are people that I only would have known uh, through teaching my courses on Zoom. 
Um, now, uh, the coffee breakers, not uh, although a bunch of them are doing online courses, because I honestly believe, I mean, that is a multi-billion dollar market right now. It's the fastest growing market online. If you're going to choose to do anything online uh, and you can teach something, I would say start with an online course, whether you, you do this with, with me, with my program or not, uh, think about an online course because it's solid gold, especially if you have um, a zone of, of expertise. This is the great thing about being older. We'll, we'll have more of them <laughs> than someone who's new. Although I have been teaching my script supervision program since I was in my 20s. So I've, I've always taught that. But um, yeah, start with that if you can. So a lot of my coffee breakers are, I won't really go into because it's sort of, it's private. It's like a mastermind group. So we, we what stays in, in the group. But, but I do want to say that most of them are artists. So most of them are writers, actors, filmmakers, um, musicians, um, and uh, there's a few people who are coaches and they work in HR, like they have sort of HR skills um, or they have multiple or they're multi-passionate like me. I'm a, I consider myself a multi-passionate because I'm always pursuing multiple avenues, uh, not only of revenue, but of creativity. Right. Um, and so all of them have s some sort of genius zone in what they do. And most of them are teaching are preparing to teach creative courses or have just started to teach creative courses. By the way, a number of them have MBAs. This was the biggest compliment to me. I have zero business training and I've got three people in the group who have actual MBAs, <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. I'm like, why are you learning from me? They said, this is completely different. It's it's really how to make money because a lot of times people do an MBA degree and they they don't know how to make money in, you know, in a specific way, like in, or like online. So um, the reason I called it Coffee Break MBA is because as I was uh, going through my my year last year and going, I, I wonder how much MBAs make. <laughs> I googled what is the average salary of an MBA uh, graduate in the United States and Canada is, and I was there. I was there. So <laughs> I was there within a month of doing uh, online. And, um, it, it, it ranged between forty and one hundred and thirty five thousand a year they, the Americans uh, were on the higher end of the spectrum and uh, Canadians were lower but um, wow can you imagine spending the money on an MBA program for two years a uh, full time and then making 40 to 135,000 a year but by the way I was there on film <laughs> like when you work on a film set you make over a hundred thousand dollars right um, easily so I was already there on a film set I just couldn't couldn't replicate it during a pandemic. I couldn't continue at that rate during a pandemic uh, when um, there was no set to go to. And by the way, there were eventually sets to go to. And on a lark, I went back to set in December and said, I wonder what, what it's like being on set now. And I, I went to set for five days. Um, so I worked five days last year on set. For three of those days, we couldn't actually start our day because there was COVID on the set. So for three of those days, I got paid to show up to work and not work because eight people on our crew had COVID. So I'm not in any hurry to go back to set anytime soon. <laughs> I went, okay, that was my little taste. And, and by the way, it was a great experiment for me because it was the first time that I could go back to set knowing I had absolutely no need to be there. Like I didn't have to go there for the money. I didn't have to go there. Uh, you know, I, like I, I, I was there for fun. And I had so much fun. The two of the five days when I could work because we could shoot. It was so much fun. It's like, wow, I'm here by choice at like 100% choice. Um, and it was just pure joy. Uh, and, and like, people are like, what are you smiling about? <laughs> I mean, I always smile on set, but I was, it was this weird, it was this crazy experience. Um, and now that I've got the second and third business going. So my goal this year, so I, I hit my goal last year was, which was to maintain 10 K a month online, like strictly from the online businesses hit that no problem. So this year, my goal is to get my students to the million dollar mark by September, and then also to scale my own business up to 30 K a month, because if I can get up to 30 K a month, and that's why I also why I started the additional businesses, by the way, now that I don't have to deliver the zooms live anymore, they're pre recorded, that's going to be easier. I just have to focus on finding the audience for them. I don't have to, um, I know that the courses are engaging, they've already been reviewed, I've already gotten great feedback, I know they've worked. So I know the courses are engaging. So the only thing for me is to get the people to them. And that's not a problem for me, I have all kinds of techniques that I teach and that I do. Um, so I know that business will make at least the same amount of money, but then I'll have these other two businesses. So those are my goals for this year, you continually have to and by the way, 
you can easily fail. Any of us can easily fail at any any point. The thing about business and the thing about just like the thing about art, this is why we're made for this as, as artists, is you, you um, g- yes, Roblin, I will talk about taxes. I, I'll answer that in, in Q&A. Um, y- y- the thing about artists is we're used to rejection. We're used to falling down and getting back up. We're used to, okay, if that didn't work, how can this work? If you're trying to give a good performance on film, you know that it's not guaranteed, right? Until you find a methodology that starts to work for you more consistently, but there's still no guarantees. You can fail. And that's the same. It's exactly the same with business. The thing that I'm loving about, about online sales is that the overhead is so low. It's not as huge of a risk. Um, and the reward, not only the financial reward, but the reward of time, it, it just gives you so much in return. It's like, why wouldn't anyone, everyone try it? Just try it. Um, so yeah, some of the people in my in, are doing online courses. Uh, some of them are doing multiple things, like they've created online courses and they're writing an ebook or they've written their ebooks. Um that's one of one of the once I get these two other businesses like in a state where they're running sort of on their own, uh, because I'm at a point where I'm going to hire virtual assistants as well. Um, uh, the next thing I want to try is what some of my students are trying, which is self publishing. That is another huge online industry. Um, and uh, there's courses that I'm I am taking and will take some more of on self publishing on audible so audiobooks, and ebooks and print. Um, so that's one of my goals, but you know, I have to hit my other goals first, I think. Um, uh, But some of my students are trying that and they're just starting. So we'll see how that goes. But I think that's, that's kind of brilliant too. Uh, Let's see, others are offering services and they're just, they're using the online platform to sell their services to people in other countries and other cities, which I, which is genius. Samcart, the platform we use is brilliant. Like it's, I can't say I've, I'm not an affiliate for anything. I never did any affiliate marketing. Cause I, I don't, I don't, I say this in my other webinar and it's a totally true story. Sales make me cringe. They really, and not because of money mindset. I mean, when people are pushy uh, about sales and, um, it's all about the dollar and not trying to um, not the part about transforming lives and and giving good service. It is uh, brutal for me as a customer. So um, I, uh, I would never do that as a salesperson either, but, but um, Sam cart, they really, it was really, um, they were the first tool I really, uh, that really led to my first bit of success so quickly. So I believed in them so hard. They, they actually contacted me to be their affiliate in August and I jumped on it. I'm like, I've never, ever believed in um, any kind of platform more. Um, So anyway, so that's the one we, we, not all of us use it. Some people are on different things. Some people are on just Thinkific or they're on their Wix site. It's like, you don't have to be on SamCard as long as you have a way of delivering your content online, um, whatever that way is. And, uh, and having an efficient payment processor, those are, that's what, that's part of the overhead. But for me, that's all incorporated into SamCard. So it's really efficient. Okay. Uh, I want to make sure I didn't leave anything out that I wanted to say. I think I said, you guys can, um, you guys can uh, ask me if, if I've left anything out because I did this so casually. I'll now read the questions in the chat. Oh, it's already 1243. Was I talking that long? Oh my God, you guys. Okay, I'll stay on as long as you guys would like me to because um, I don't have a Valentine's date. I love it. I, uh, <laughs> Daniela became financially independent during the pandemic. By the time the pandemic is over, I'm going to be able to travel, uh, date freely, do whatever I want. <laughs> it's so funny. It's like... Um, when the opportunity returns to have a life, I'll actually have a life. Okay. Um, do you explain how the taxes work in this program? So Rob, uh, Roblin, um, I, ha- I don't have a module on taxes, but I can tell you how taxes work. Uh, it's the same way they work when we are uh, freelancers, not online. So what happens is uh, if you have a business, and, and so I have a, a great accountant in Toronto, and most of uh, his clients are much bigger online entrepreneurs than I am. So the first thing I did when I started the online business was talk to him and say, how do taxes work? So he sent me a list. He said, well, you're a Canadian. Um, When you sell internationally, you can't charge tax to, you can't charge sales tax to anyone outside of Canada, but you have to charge sales tax to Canadians. So you'll see, you know, you're in my class. Um, So whenever someone registers for my program, uh, it'll say right on there, plus HST for Canadian residents. Now it's a different rate by province, right? So the, um, 
um, my accountant gave me a rate sheet from Revenue Canada that lists what the HST is that I have to charge for people in each province. Now, I don't have to do any of that at all manually because SamCart does it for me. So the SamCart, um, the, the sales platform that I use, it automatically calculates the sales tax based on where you live. So if, if I have a customer in New York City, which I have a lot of customers in New York City, it automatically doesn't charge them tax. And it gives them a receipt, it gives me a receipt. So it's it's like a no-brainer. Now, if you don't use SamCart, you would have to do this manually or, or the other platforms do this. They'll calculate the sales tax for you. I'm just learning a new platform called Kibo to sell physical products for my new business and they calculate the tax for you. Um, so, uh, oh, Tommy, oh my God, what a great idea. So Tommy asks, do you think a course on how to put on a genre could work uh, as an online course? Yes, oh, Tommy, that is a that is what I call a premium course. So for those who don't know, and most people don't know, Tommy is a, quite accomplished in the horror genre. Um, she has directed, she has done special effects makeup. Um, she's a script supervisor now. And um, I'm sure you've also done more, Tommy, but I just don't happen to know about it. Um, genre convention also. So you could do, there's no, there's multiple. So um, I, th I can immediately, when you said that, I could see you teaching a premium course. And when I say premium, I mean, at least 997 US of the process, uh, because you know, so you have every angle, you could talk about the, like the theory, the convention, the things that you make it passionate for you, like the way that my, and my covered class talks about shot so you you could talk about the conventions and the visual you could talk about the visual storytelling you could talk about the practical aspects of putting together and shooting and delivering a, a low budget horror feature because i'm assuming most of your features were were probably low budget and and you did it so uh that is huge you, like i mean you could do an a to z course also you, you could do smaller courses you could do just a, like a, a course on um, theory and convention and, and visual style. You could do a, a course, but if you do a course, Tommy, on um, on uh, teaching how to make horror films or sci-fi or genre, yes, on different genres. If you if you do that, just promise me you won't charge. Le I way undercharge for my courses, so just promise me you will not charge less than four ninety seven to do that. But I, I think you can charge at least nine ninety seven US. When I saw that the other script supervision teachers were charging over $2,000 for courses that don't teach as much as my $500 course did, I nearly died because I was uh, in the business longer than them um, and I was teaching longer than them. So um, I was I was a little bit upset with myself. So my uh, yes, I know, by the way, I have at least five students for you already. I have students who are dying to be in the horror industry. Joel, just so I'm clear, is the focus of the course primarily about creating your own video based on educational training program? You mentioned saleable goods as well. Oh, so Joel, oh yes, let me let me clarify. So Coffee Break MBA is a community. So it is a course in the sense that I, I provide learning content on an ongoing basis on all different topics relating to starting your own business. But it's not a course on how to create a course. There is that aspect in one of the modules is on how to create your online course, like literally how to take your knowledge and put it into an online course. But Coffee Break MBA is a, a it's a, a, a community and a course. So the, the aim of the program is for, for uh, people in it, and most of us being artists, to start from scratch to build an online business of any kind. So uh, I, I teach marketing. I, teach, I do teach course creation. I teach copywriting. So it's not like you can take very specialized courses just on course creation. There are some good ones. Like I think Danielle Leslie's course from scratch. It's a 2000 US program. It's all about course creation. I think I think that is a good one if that is all you're interested in. Um, but um, I, I do have all the broad strokes and I, and I answer all the short strokes in the in the live Q and A's for people every week. But um, I'm, what I'm saying is, uh, it's a place for people to explore. So whether you want to do the online course, that's an option. Um, but you, the fact is, whatever aspect of online um, business uh, you choose, or you want to do, whether it's selling physical products, well, whether it's publishing an ebook, whether it's doing online courses or providing a service that you can sell online, you have to know how to market it, you have to know how to set up a business, you have to know how to talk to your customers in email through email in, in the way that it gets automated. 
um, and streamlined. You have to know how to create a sales page. You have to know how to deliver a sales webinar. So these skills apply whether you're doing an online course or any kind of online business like at all. So, so yes, some people are doing physical products. I'm just starting to do physical products. I have two people that are doing physical products in my program. Um, uh, but most people are choosing online courses uh, because it is uh, the fastest, most lucrative. We can all there's I, I guarantee you there is something every single person in this in this call or watching this later on uh, can do to can teach to make money online. Uh, and whether or not I bet it's funny, I've had people say, oh, I'm not I'm not a good teacher. And then when when I talk to them about their program, it's like they're in this completely different space where yes, I'm learning just from hearing them talk about their thing. So um, you don't know until you try and like, it's like money mindset. It's like money mindset. Oh, I'm not a good business person. I don't I can't make six figures. I can't make seven figures, right? Uh, if you keep telling yourself that it will come true. But if you uh, keep saying I'm not a good teacher, like there is something we can all teach. So yeah, so 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 coffee break MBA, the components of the program are uh, weekly learning on a different topic of business every week, I do take requests. But mostly I, I, I have the, like my, my next module is going to be uh, publicity because everyone's been asking me how they get on podcasts and that, that's a great topic. So I'm going to be doing that. Hiring a virtual assistant is going to be another one coming up. Um, physical products, print on demand um, and self-publishing are modules I want to do. Like it's, it's, I want to get it up to at least 20 before I stop delivering a new content. I probably will never stop because there's always something to learn. <laughs> but so anyway, anyway, every week, there's a different topic, a different theme with worksheets and videos. Um, every week, at least once a week, there is a live Q&A or a Zoom. The Zoom strategies are two hours long. And anyone who wants to can hop on them. Usually I get between one and 20 people on those. And then the weekly live Q&As are one hour. So it's a it's coaching a course and a community because all day, every day, we've got our Facebook community where we just communicate about how it's going. We tell each other our strategies. Like I'll, I'll, every month I'll post, this is my strategy this month for how I'm going to make money online. And then I, at the end of the month, I'll say, this is what happened. Did it, did what worked, what didn't work, what surprised me? Um, and, and not everyone has to share. A lot of us do though, because we're all learning from each other. So, and, did I answer your question? So uh, Roblin recorded what days are the live? So uh, I usually do the lives on other Friday or Saturday or Sunday. So Coffee Break MBA, my most casual, you know, my courses are pre recorded My other courses are all pre-recorded um, and they'll go at your own pace. Um, and we do, uh, as you know, Roblin, in my comedy writing, we do our, because I have uh, people in Australia and the UK and the US, I, I do that that comedy writing class Saturday afternoons at three. So I just basically schedule my coffee break MBA. I try to do it. I've got people in three countries right now on coffee break MBA, um, like in the UK, Canada and the United States. So uh, and we're on both coasts. So I vary it so that people can. Um, and when, then we keep the recording of the live up in the group. So uh, sometimes we do it on Friday afternoons. Sometimes we do it on Saturday mornings. Sometimes we do it um, Sunday mornings. Uh, lately, it's been Friday afternoons EST. So it's all based on Toronto time. Most people here are Toronto, but I have some people on different coasts. So I'm always talking EST. Yes. And the, yeah, there's always a recording. And by the way, you can always send questions. You can always send questions um, that I will answer in the lives if you can't attend the lives. Um, yeah. I, is that clear, Joel? Is it clear? I know it's it's sort of a, yeah, it's sort of an, an um, it's more casual. Like I literally based it on a coffee because what, ha what used to happen before lockdown is I would literally, I would get 12 different not even a, not even an exaggeration 12 different people emailing me whether I knew them or not hey can I take you out for coffee and pick your brain <laughs> and I'm sure a number of you go through this I know my friend Colin Brenton is a producer and we used to joke how many people asked you out for coffee today and he's like yeah because I've got all kinds of time to just go out for coffee <laughs> and, and like that's the payment for picking my brain when I'm like you know I like going out for coffee in fact I miss that and now now oh, oh I can't wait for the day when it, so I can go out for coffee <laughs> at a coffee shop but um, it became like the joke between you know me and Colin uh, uh, about take me out for coffee uh, and that's that's my reward for interrupting my day to tell you everything I know so um, uh, if you could take me out for coffee every week and I can tell you everything I know 
know about business one coffee break at a time. That's how I base the price. And that's how I base the, um, the structure of year one. So I'm opening it up to the to this is like the second wave, I opened it up in August, this is the second wave, I, I, I would include anyone who, uh, who wants to join me on, on this wave in my September goal. I, I want to see where I'm at in September. I really, really, really want people to make I want to be able to say I led the Coffee Break MBA group to make a million dollars in the first year. <laughs> I would love that. Um, not only because of the ego boost it would give me, but because I think it's so doable. Um, what's the deadline to sign up? You know, I'm sending you money for the writer's room. <laughs> There's not really a deadline. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm opening it up. Uh, I'm just, I'm advertising it this week. There's not really a deadline, but I would say uh, if you, if you join in the next month, I think we're, we're hitting some nice, critical mass in the group, meaning um, some of the August people are really starting to do things. And you're going to be motivated by seeing them, um, uh, just seeing them excel um, and seeing the tactics and strategies that they landed on. There's so many, like a lot. One of my biggest ones early on was doing five-day challenges. I love taking five-day challenges, but when I was able to distill things uh, that I teach into five-day challenges, and Roblin, you took my five-day premise, you know, come up with a premise for your pilot in five days. I love that. There, the, it, it was so much fun to create and teach, and it was so much fun to see the concepts. Anyway, some of my most successful students, that's how they're killing it with their online courses is they're doing five-day challenges. Um, so no deadline. I'm just like we're basically reopening it up. Um, but I would say if you join in the next month, you're joining at a super exciting time. Um, oh, let me let me put the link. By the way, of course, I will email everybody um, with the replay and the link. But in case you want to check out my Sam Cart sales page for the program, so it's 197 US plus HST if you're in Canada. <laughs> Um, yes, uh, taxes are Roblin taxes are the least of your worries when you have an online course, because a lot of the programs calculate all that stuff for you, you just do your accounting at the end, print out your documents and pay the HST that you have to pay, which is fine. <laughs> uh, any, any other did I miss any questions because it scrolls down and then sometimes I can't scroll up. Did I miss any questions? Does anyone have any, any other questions? I'm, I'm here if you do. If your end goal is to be a paid writer director, is it a good idea to be known as I'm, I'm loud and proud about my online business. I'm actually looking forward to my yeah, because um, they kind of run themselves, uh, meaning at first you put in some work a few hours a week, but um, online businesses at a certain point can run themselves. Um, so I'm about to hire some VAs some virtual assistants. Um, uh, I want to set up, I want my drop shipping business to be running by me personally for the first month, and then I'm handing it over. Um, <laughs> you have tons of questions, you don't even know where to start. That's awesome, Haley. I, I love it. Um, that's why people do Coffee Break MBA, because <laughs> then you can just keep asking them every week. Um, so so I think, so So what I was saying, uh, uh, Kiteri, is that I can't wait to go to my meetings in LA when they say, how are you going to earn a living while you're my screenwriting client for a year? And I am so say, well, I'm already a six-figure entrepreneur online on a business that almost runs itself. Any more questions? <laughs> I literally cannot wait to say that in meetings. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, like I said, people will throw tomatoes at you for different reasons. But if they're throwing tomatoes at you for running an online business, uh, they're not your people. <laughs> and as a writer director, also it doesn't matter. It says, you know how many, uh, how many writer directors teach? So many. I work with writers on the floor, like on US shows. And they're like, oh, yeah, I teach at the New York Film Academy. By the way, it doesn't pay as much as working for yourself and teaching online. But um, for your supplier of the dropshipping, did you choose local US or China? Oh, no, no, all American. So I'm working with a company called Kibo, which is I'm in their beta group. So I'm, I'm crazy. I take a lot of risks. I'm in a beta group for this company called Kibo. One of the founders is from Toronto. Um, this is a big experiment. It's a little bit of a risk in that it's a $4,000 program, right? Um, but that's my cost of doing business. You sort of have to calculate your cost of doing business. For that 4000 I get all the training on dropshipping which has been amazing. It's all, uh, I chose them because they're hundred percent in the United States. I, so far I can't even sell to anyone outside the United States, but the United States is a huge market. Um, 
I get to run my company from Toronto and make, I don't have to pay taxes in the States, uh, but the company itself is in the United States selling to Americans with American made and sourced products. So most of the products that they've, so they've given me a few to start with um, uh, so that to train me on how to do it. And then I have 2 million products to, for, that are made in America that I can start with. So no, nothing from, nothing from China. Um, uh, nothing against China. It's just the, the, it's the, the shipping issue. Uh, it's the issue of having things shipped from overseas uh, and the quality issue too. There is a quality issue sometimes because you don't know, like the quality control isn't there. So I went with a completely U.S. company. Um, yes, Carolyn, I know. Well, this is the thing I used to teach. I did a lot. I do a lot of guest lecturing. And I remember the last time I taught there, because I was, they're like, this is the most we can pay you. The I was like, I make thousands an hour teaching online. Okay, but fine, $100 an hour. Then they tried to roll back my wage and said, you're making more than our te teachers make. And I went, but I'm bringing my own curriculum. I'm not teaching your curriculum. So I stopped teaching. I just stopped teaching uh, at live. And I'll still do guest lectures. By, by the way, I love teaching. So I still will do guest lectures for my friends, but I can't, um, I just can't fathom like I just can't fathom the idea of creating your own content bringing it in and um being capped at 100 an hour um <laughs> any other questions <laughs> it's it's a big so the message the overall uh, takeaway did you like return to four? Oh, hi Celine <laughs> Celine is about to be a gazillionaire no Celine is about to have such a successful online program I cannot tell you I just cannot tell you um uh, I'm, I'm really, really proud of everyone in my MBA program, but Celine has something so unique to offer and uh, from her life. And um, I just can't wait. Uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a couple of people who are like, they're building, like I have a, a friend in the group who's building her second course. I'm like, hurry up and build it because I want to take it. <laughs> um, so, so, so the takeaway I want you to, to have is whether you are interested in Coffee Break MBA or not, Think about, if you haven't thought about it already, um, what you can do to make money online because it's not hard. It'll be one of the easiest things you've ever done. It doesn't require much to start. It just requires ideas. And as creatives, we are full of them, full of ideas. Some of them will work. Some of them will fail. Um, hopefully, uh, you can do some really low risk, low cost ones to start with to get you going. And it's joyful. It's joyful to see the transformation uh, that you can, the impact you can have on other people's lives. Anyone else? <laughs> oh my God, it's Valentine's Day. So, so great. Um, I'm going to enjoy my Valentine's Day coffee. Uh, <laughs> um, if there's no other questions, I'll, I'll give it a, another minute, but if there's no other questions, and, and do email me at mondocinema at gmail.com. Thanks, Droblin. If you want to see that really detailed, it was, it's a 90 minute webinar showing the step-by-step -step things I did to market um, and sell my first two courses. It's very, very detailed. Thanks everyone. <laughs> I know super cash this one, but I was in a very casual mood. Thanks. Uh, hi, Lisa. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.